What's up, everybody? It's Jeremy, and I am hanging out here in the attic, and I think I'm enjoying this so much because I get to meet new people and be inspired by the amazing things that they are doing or even building, and uh, that's definitely the case today. Um, our guest, Stefan, and I'm probably going to screw this up, even though you just told me how to say it, Gika. Yeah, no, that's yeah. right. Just you said it right. Okay, Hello, everybody. So, what's up? Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. Um, I have to say, like, I came across your channel. I saw your van and was like, oh, this thing's cool. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I, get to, I get to see a lot of vans. I'm always impressed with um, how people build their vans and what they do to them because I completely lack the skills of woodworking and building cool stuff on the inside. I tend to go through a lot of wood because I cut it a little short. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. And then I'm like, I can't just add to it like welding. Uh, however, my brother is amazing at woodworking. So I don't know, somewhere, you know, he got that one and I got the metal one, I guess. You know? <laughs> but uh, definitely having fun. So let tell me a little bit about you. Let's. I'd love to start with like, so first of all, your van. Tell me, what is your van? So my van is a 2006 Ford E350, and it's a V8 if that matters at all. So it's yeah, like it's a 5.4, four, and it's yeah. the extended version. It's of, not. It's the regular. It's the, sh the short the, one. Yeah. Okay. So you have the shorter version of the van, and mm -hmm. being a 2006, um, I know it had low miles when you got it. You were saying it had 55,000, I think. Yeah. And now, where yeah, are you at there. now? A hundred and ten, I want to say. And how many years have you had this van? Uh, five-ish, five years, maybe six. So uh, you're, I think I'm creeping on six years, yeah. So you're putting 25,000 miles a year annually on your van, correct? Like roughly? Uh, around there, yeah. Maybe a little less than that, but yeah. It oh, I mean, I have, yeah, because yeah. I guess a hundred would be 20,000 roughly. Yeah. But, okay. But still, like... That's you're not commuting to work back and forth every day, you know. So that's where I'm like a lot of people pick oh, up we miles. Got interrupted. Um, so what is a normal year of traveling like? What does that look like to you? So uh, I still have a weekend job, so I always I have to come back on the weekends and work. Okay. So I can't go really far. And now I'm in like Southern uh, California, but uh, I try to like the furthest I've gone was probably Sequoia and that's where like the miles kind of added up a bit. Okay. Uh, but I try to adventure, like I try to enjoy the lifestyle, not just kind of sit in town. <laughs> I okay. do that on the weekend enough. And now, so, so being in Southern California, we're at in Southern California, are you based out of? Well, right now I'm in uh, like Dana Point, Laguna Beach okay. area. Yeah. Yeah was just up there. I actually just, was born in San Clemente. There you so, go. Well, yeah. You know, so yeah, totally am familiar with that whole area. Dana Sweet. Point is awesome. Um, so yeah, so then you're getting to be able to go travel during the week. Um, yeah. Do you find like, so how long have you been doing this now? So full time. So, okay. So a little story time. Okay. Perfect. Uh, I had a van in New York. So I lived in New York for a little bit and I, bought a cheap one and um if you want to know more about that i'll talk about that no. but then when i yeah because i i totally saw it was like so much new york based stuff so then when you just mentioned southern california i'm like wait a second like yeah okay <laughs> so well i moved to california and then i moved to new york and now i'm back in california because that's usually where my most of my family is okay and uh so yeah, this van, um, first I was just kind of doing like trips and stuff like that. And then it got broken into. And uh, that was actually 2020 when it got broken into. Go figure. And uh, then they stole like a really expensive battery. One was uh, Goal Zero. I'm not sure okay. if you're familiar with the brand. Yeah, totally. But uh, after that, you know, I was like, I have to stay with it. Not to fight anybody that wants to come in, but drive away, you know, like them. if somebody, yeah, yeah, somebody like tries to get in. Um, you know, it was a safe area and everything, but they stole a few things in. 
the battery was one thing, but they stole a few things that I can't replace. Like I had like a vintage camera that I've taken a bunch of photos with that I was going to develop. Those are gone. Uh, a few personal things that were given uh, to me by friends or family, and then I can't replace any of that stuff. So, you know, now I'm, I've, since then I've been in it pretty much 99% of the time. And so now you built out the whole interior of this van. Yeah. So what did that process, where were, where did you do that at? Like, how did that come into tuition as far as like what you wanted in the van and what you wanted to do? Well, that's uh, funny enough because, like, you know, everybody that starts a van build, I feel like they watch a bunch of YouTube, a lot of vans, a lot of people okay. building stuff. And you come up with ideas. But, um, you know, the one thing that you hear repeating in all of the van builds is like, oh, I need this thing to do three things or I need to, you know, because it's a small space. But I find that if it's hard to do, you won't do it. Like, for example, people make all these beds that they built into offices and then they make the bed at night again. I don't see myself doing anything like that. So I, I prioritize ease of use. If I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to build it. So I wanted to make sure that I use everything that I use that I have in here. So everything is within reach, of course, because it's small. But it, So what it's, were the three things that you felt like you had to have um, – to make your van build work for you? Um, just, you know, a place that's nice and a place that's peaceful. Like, uh, I, I wanted to avoid clutter. I didn't want that because it's small already. I'm not claustrophobic or anything, but, you know, so this is my third iteration of it. First one was kind of cheap. I wanted to, I didn't have a lot of money and I wanted to save some money. And then the second one had like a standing closet and, that was the worst idea ever. I thought it was cool, but, uh, you know, you can put your shirt shirts in. But I hit my head in that thing, like, so many times. Just getting out of bed, just moving around. It was just way too much. So I redid uh, the van to what it is right now. So is the van your primary, like, dwelling? Or do you have a house that allows you to... No, no, this is it. So then how do you... Where do you find the place to be able to be like... Hey, I'm going to take apart half of my house. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, <laughs> I like, see what you mean, yeah. yeah, like if I want to tear apart a bedroom, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go live in another bedroom in my house. Like, <laughs> yeah. how do you, what do you do in that situation where you're like, you, you got no, I, what, well, like I said, I have family here. So, okay. Uh, my sister has an apartment, uh, and then in the apartment complex, there's like a corner there that nobody really cares. And as long as I have the pass in the window that they say it's not yeah. like some crazy dude building his stuff in the parking lot. Right. Um, the only person that bothered me didn't actually bother me. She just came over because she saw like, oh, I saw these on YouTube and they're so cool. And that was kind okay. of it. So but, you had a fan before you even, you know. Yeah. Right. You know, they're <laughs> like, hey. <laughs> Well, it turns out she and her husband also love camping. They have like okay. a truck camper or something. So, you know. It was totally acceptable. So that's yeah. the thing is like some people that are wanting to jump immediately into van life. But then it's like, okay, you kind of got to plan it out. Like, are you going to be able to stay at somebody's house or do that? Yeah, I was lucky with to... that for sure. Right. And now this is your first van build or your second van build? You said... Yeah, so the first one uh, was the one in New York, and it was an uh, E-150, and I okay. found out that was a big mistake. Right, uh, yes. But I bought the cheapest one that I could find, uh, and I, that was only because I wanted to see if I even like it. Like, okay. I didn't want to buy an expensive van and then not like the lifestyle. So that one I did build on the street in Brooklyn in, uh, what was it, uh, Red Hook? I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with. No, I'm not, but... New York, but I'm sure okay. some of the the people listening right. have probably and that's more of an industrial area so that was fine you know i actually then when i was building that van i think 10 people stopped by and like told me about their volkswagens that they had back in the day and then their friend had like their father had like a westphalia or something and what Just year would that... you say that was what i'm sorry year was that what year was that uh i think i want to say 1998 wait no 2018 See, and so I love that because it's like, I was talking about that before. I bought my van in 01 and, you know, did the same sort of things. I didn't have the inside built out, but it was like, 
I would say like you're one like an OG van. You know, it's like it was before van life was cool. I mean, if you're doing it and it was in the 90s, it was like, yes, it was cool in the 80s. It died out in the 90s, but it was like coming back. But you were just drawn to the van. Was it purely for the fact that you found that it was giving you the freedom to do what you wanted or what was that? Well, I mean, there's a few there, there's a few things. One, uh, I was getting ready to move back to California, so I didn't want to pay rent anymore. And New York apartments are not as big as people think. They're a bit bigger than a van. <laughs> so okay. it's not it's not a huge thing. So I figured, you know what, it's summer right before winter. I think it was spring. And I'm like, this is my opportunity to at least build this thing out, see if I like it, sell it before I leave, which is what I've done. And uh, yeah, so I didn't want to pay extra rent. And the other thing is like most of the time, um, I found myself kind of getting out of the city, going exploring, taking photos and stuff like that. And then I wasn't home very much. I would just go go home and sleep and eat and shower and that's kind of it. So I didn't see a point to pay rent for all of that where I could just do it in a van. Awesome. Now, this van, your current van actually <clears throat> has a name. You've named your van. Oh, wow. You looked back. That's so, awesome. <laughs> so let's share with us that name. Yeah. Because I'll screw that name up as well. So I have I actually stopped calling it that. I mean, I am still calling it. I just don't put it in videos. It's called okay. Ganapa Ganapati. Okay. And that's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's like an Indian god or goddess. That a Buddhist is supposed deity. Yeah. That is supposed to like... Uh, you know, help travelers to have a safe way on the way. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's kind of why I picked it. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, it sounds, you know, great. And that's where I didn't know if it was a part of like your religion or what you No, not at all. In, or if it was just like, hey, I just like this. It's fun. It represents the yeah. van. <laughs> so, no, I mean, it's great because you never know. I mean, some things are just completely just random and fun you know where other people are like nope this is it and here's why and you know all of all of that that goes along with it now being that this is kind of your second van build there's a ton of detail um that goes into it folding tables things of like that and that's mm -hmm. um all stuff that you did yourself like do, is this like a self-taught sort of thing or is this same thing like everybody else, YouTube Academy. Like you watch a bunch of videos and you kind of like, oh, I think that's cool. Like I'll I'll put that aside for my van build and then, you know, and then, you know, again, to say that this is, uh, didn't come together all at once. Like I added things that I thought were cool. I took things away that I didn't use. So it's uh, always a work in progress if I, being honest <laughs> yeah no i feel like anything is it's like the more time you spend with it or in it you kind of start to realize like oh yeah. i would like this or now was there is there any reason that you've do you have an issue with the height of it have you decided or would you want like a a taller top in it yeah like, i mean um so well nowadays if you look at van prices that have high tops <laughs> they've gone up quite a bit uh, I looked to add a high top to this one. Like uh, a fiberine so top. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Actually, that's I think that's yeah, the company. that's the company. Fiber, uh, and um, the same thing. When I first called, it was somewhere around like 2500 Now it's like five grand. It was doubled right. in price. Yeah. And at that point, I'm like, well, I can go on so many trips with that kind of money and right. have so many more adventures. I gotten used to, yeah, sure, sure, it'd be nice to be able to stand up, but I've gotten used to it. I mean, I do things like sitting down just like right now. Right. It's not that big of a deal. What it does do, though, which I love, is it, it forces me to be outside. I don't want to live now, in see, it. see, that yeah. makes perfect sense because... I think of like my kids in our motor home and yeah. they're like, well, I don't need to go outside. Like it's really <laughs> nice inside here. You know, like I can sit on the couch and watch a movie. I can, yeah. do, I can do this. Or, I'm like, no, like go outside and play. And I yes. mean, unfortunately a lot of times like we're at like a racetrack, so it may not be that exciting for my girls, mm. but at the same time, 
I get that, that, that perspective of like, I built the van to be able to come back and refresh and be able to sleep in. It's not my home. I didn't build a van to, to live in my van. I'm living out of my van and yes. I'm living in my surroundings. So pretty I think, much. Yeah. I think that that's huge because when you think of it that way, it's like you watch these crazy elaborate builds and I'm like, I still can't understand putting two hundred plus thousand dollars into a sprinter van, right? And it just—I I don't get it, you know. And maybe it's just a whole nother level of money too, you know, like. Well, like, I mean, yeah, but it's again, it's one of those things. I'm not in a rush to like have the biggest, baddest van in the world. I just kind of see what I need when I a nice suspension lift would be. It would be great. Yeah. Uh, but that's coming. I know, know a just... guy that does that. I can't kind of. Oh, no, it, really? <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like I, I've heard of it. I, it. Hopefully by the end of this, it'll come back to me. But, you know, um, I, no, I heard I, they're the best in the business. I'll... <laughs> I, you know, I have heard that as well. You know, um, no, I mean, I just love that. Um, so now we talk. you kind of mentioned, you know, like as far as like money and stuff like that. So now you do work just on the weekends and yeah what do you what do you do for work i just work in right now i'm just working in the service industry and okay. uh i valet very expensive cars <laughs> okay so you get to drive a lot of fun stuff huh? <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure now um what would be like your is your ultimate goal just to be able to travel and do youtube yes. stuff? i mean would that be like if i could just travel didn't have to rely on valeting cars that would be it and if yep. that was the case, where would your first trip be to? Nashville, Tennessee. Why? Uh, I've never been and I heard really, really great things about it. Plus, I like like music. But I, I heard the vibe. The whole town is very, very cool. Like, everybody's super cool. So, we'll see. So, I've heard the same thing. And even, like, my wife says, like, Nashville is kind of becoming, like, what Vegas was in the 90s. Is just a fun <laughs> okay. place to like go and experience the culture yeah. because now I look at Vegas and Vegas is like it's so expensive for everything. Like, uh, oh, you want you want a chair at the pool? Oh, it's forty bucks, you know. So I definitely I'm right there with you. I think Nashville would be fun. Um, I love country music. I love just you know so much. Um, I mean, I have so many people that I know even in California that have recently even moved to Tennessee. So it's, uh, it's definitely been on those like, Hey, let's go check it out sort of thing. So I, uh, yeah, I mean, I have many places in mind and, um, but you know, like I like to travel slow. So if that would, you know, the dream is to be able to travel and make YouTube videos and take people along with me and all that stuff. But the dream is to travel slow so you kind of get a feel of it um, because at some point I may want to move from Southern California, you know, I may, may want to buy a piece of land. I'm not there yet, but right. that's a great way to actually explore not only like the town, but kind of the people and what uh, what the place has to offer, you know. And now what would be some of those things that would, what is something that you would look for in a town that would just make it? feel like it was home or you would want to live there listen i'm a simple guy you know as long as uh you have the right amenities you know you have the right uh, uh you know like you have a hospital in it small town but you have to have some things that are safe to live in uh, uh i'm looking for land but not california prices land because yeah. that's unattainable right and um you know, forest, the river, you know, somewhere where I can, uh, that's the one thing I'm missing uh, that I don't have here is um, there's not a lot of forests. I mean, I'm looking and I'm going and I found some places, but it's really hard to go and camp in like real forests, you know. Yeah, but that's what's crazy. So I just did a trip up the Oregon. We came down the California yeah. coast and I was blown away at just the amount of forest and trees that there are in Northern California. And you talk yeah. about like, I live, I've lived in California my whole life. And then you go, you know, yeah, several hundred miles, you know, up the, up the state. And it's completely different. I was like, 
okay, tr- I've seen enough trees now. You know, like, <laughs> dude, I mean, just trees everywhere. I mean, it was yeah. it was definitely one of those. Um, so yeah, definitely going up north, maybe just South Oregon, but again, I'm not familiar yet, so we'll see. Um, I will tell you one thing though. I am more of a mountain guy than a, okay. like a ocean guy, like a beach guy. So okay. that kind of speaks to me in that aspect of it. Now I understand that you have a second successful career as a professional food eater. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that- I love to cook. I So that comes from back in New York. I okay. actually uh, opened and uh, ran a bar restaurant. Okay. And um, I was terrible at, I was just, I'll just serve cheeses and wine and call it a day. But then I quickly found that people wanted more than that. So I kind of taught myself how to cook and like serve these uh, dishes that I came up with myself okay and now what made you stop doing that oh i sold it okay i i, I had no life so <laughs> that was it, it yeah was i was yeah i was working of now yeah i was working like 10 days a week so i love the place but yeah it was just uh non-stop you know so now are you still passionate about it is that something that you could see yourself returning to or not really <laughs> i like to to how would I, yeah, I like to say this, when I look back at it, it's like looking bad at a, looking back at a bad relationship. You only, you only remember the good things about it, Okay. you know, but then you forget all the bad things that happened. Right. You know? no, I so, mean, that's a great analogy of it. Yeah. You know, cause... Cause yeah, I do think about like, man, it'd be nice to have like, you know, you know, this bar or like this restaurant by the beach or something. But then I'm like bills, stuff breaking down, uh, inspections from the city and all the other stuff. It's like, yeah, you know, I am good yeah. with YouTube. I'll just and, cook and in my videos. And especially you don't want to do that in California. No, Maybe that's no, the no, no, definitely not. Business. No, <laughs> you know, that, that might be the Tennessee business um, or wherever you wind up, you know. So. Yeah. Now, is there a favorite? Now, are you a vegetarian? I am. Yes. Okay. So favorite kind of food? Like, what are you into now? Uh, well, my like go to if I need to whip something together in like half an hour is like tacos. Okay. You know, it's super easy to make tacos. Uh, you know, mushrooms, tofu, old. You know, you could. There's a lot of stuff that you know, or just your classic bean and cheese. <laughs> okay. And now, um, and that and that's like, and do you feel like you go to that because it's easy also to cook, um, like you know, living out of your van as well? Is that your go-to or? I mean, let's be honest, in a van, you don't have all the water in the world. So the less dis- dishes, the better, okay. the, you know? Right. Uh, so what I do have is like, um, I do have a dual cooktop, but it's up on the roof and I only pull that out when I'm getting extreme out camping for a while. But other than that, I actually have a, uh, induction cooktop which is only one yep. single burner and the biggest pan in the world that i could find that i could fit in the van it actually only fits in one drawer because it's that big like it doesn't fit in anywhere else and so with get... that i can you know cook in the same pan the whatever i'm going to put in the taco shells and then cook those in there as well so it works out really well now Easy. it's yeah what was it it seemed like you enjoyed new york a lot um, and it's obviously very different than out yeah. here. What was it that just made you leave New York, though? Um, yeah, it was at a time in my life where, like, you know, I would want to say New York is more of, like, New York in the city, specifically, is more of a young person's game, you know. Okay. Um, but after a while, I found myself, you know, going upstate New York, where it's kind of like here, you know, like, there's beaches, there's a, it's just like a suburb. Uh, area so okay. with that i was like you know i could do that in california minus the weather you know and now your and, family's all out here in california yeah so originally though so if we can let's touch on that so you were where are you where were you born uh bucharest romania okay and yeah. so you grew up there your family mm-hmm. that's they're all romanian grew up there what was it that um were you the first to leave to come to the United States? No, or? my my father left first, and after I 
think after four years we moved over uh, okay. here. There, I think they were planning this for a while though. You know? Okay. And Back how old when were it was you? like a communist. Uh, I was thirteen when I uh, when we got here. Okay. And so, what was that experience going from like being thirteen years old? Um, you know, living in a country that you knew. Did you know English before you came here? No. <laughs> okay. So, I, I took English, but I was bad at it. I should have done a better job. Because <laughs> you never knew what it was going to yeah. take to really, truly know that. Well, um, th yeah. So then you came here. How difficult was that for you to adapt to the U.S. and and learning that new language as well? Um, the I think I was pretty good in about six months to a year. I was still okay. pretty young. And uh, but I did make it a point to just not talk to many Romanian people, try to like have people that spoke English as friends, a bunch of bunch, uh, TV and stuff like that. So it wasn't super hard, but um, it was more of a change in the lifestyle, if anything, you know, where it, it was kind of a shock where like nobody walks on the street in Southern California. Just everybody drives everywhere. Right. Uh, where in Romania is kind of a city. The Bucharest is kind of a city. So we never had a car. Okay. So then at what age did you, did your parents have a car once you guys came here? Yeah. He had a really old car. <laughs> so it wasn't like, and, and I guess the reason I'm asking is sometimes it's, you know, young things that influence people. They see something and they're like, oh, you know, I saw this van. It was really neat. And, you know, just like, hey, one day I want to do this. If there was, oh, any, I see. you know, younger inspirational things that kind of, you know, made you go, I want to do that one day. You know, you know or, I'll tell you when I actually thought, like I, it first came up uh, in on YouTube for me. It was actually, I, uh, I was a big fan of Anthony Bourdain. Like okay. his travels yeah. and stuff like that. And for some reason, uh, there was a recommended video that this family like traveled the U.S. And I think the world actually uh, in a VW bus Westphalia. But they they were traveling with two kids, a cat and a dog. Like there was a bunch of people in there. I was like, man, if they can they can do that, that sounds really fun. And I don't remember the name of the channel, but I, the way they filmed it, it was awesome. Gotcha. We are going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and keep talking with Stefan here and uh, getting to know him and his van. This is definitely cool. Um, getting a little bit of insight into the New York days versus the California days uh, here on the channel. So we'll be back in just a minute. And I ended up deciding to just go for it and get the five inch Baja grocery getter kit with the Fox shocks and the progressive leaf springs in the rear. I cannot explain how much better the van is now. It drives like an entirely new vehicle. And there you have it. This is the completed WellTech Designs Baja grocery getter five inch lift kit. Here's a little before and after. Yeah, and that is a cool transformation. All right, today's the day when we're taking the Weld Tech Designs Baja Grocery Getter Kit out of the garage, putting it on the van. Like an injured bird, needing a nest, a place to rest. All in all, I am very pleased with the lift. It is super crazy, it's super fun. We've taken it out on multiple camping trips already. Everywhere I go, people stop me and go, what in the heck is up with this thing? I'm driving down the road and you'll see dudes like rubbernecking trying to check it out. It's crazy. I park it at work and people are just blown away with it. Are you kidding me? In that van? On an ATV trail? So let me tell you, it was so good to put those KO2 tires that are on my van and that WellTech lift kit to the test. First time ever I've had it out here and done something like that. Treated this thing like a go-kart with a WellTech Designs Baja Grocery Getter Lift Kit. All right, guys, we are hanging up in the attic with Stefan. I'm getting to learn all about him and his amazing van build, even though we're on, you said, this is your third time around kind of changing things up. Um, but I think that that's what's great because you are handy and you're able to do it yourself which uh, definitely makes it easier versus like if you were to have to take it to the shop each time you decided you wanted to make a change. 
Um, it was definitely cool talking about just you growing up, um, being from Romania, being an immigrant, um, and, you know, getting to experience the U.S. I think that that's, you know, still to this day, I think that, you know, anybody that looks at the U.S. and the American dream and what is um, obtainable and achievable here is uh, definitely something to be passionate about. And now, you know, you doing that and exploring, you know, your passions, which a big part of not only living in a van is, but photography and videography. Um, it's not just um, vloggy. I think it can also be very cinematic as well. Oh, okay. So what is it that has made you feel that the difference to kind of separate it and take the time to get specific shots to really, you know, I'm going to say like bring your viewers into a more um, like personal level of, of, of you and your atmosphere. Well, actually, that's that's a great way to say it. Um, I feel like, you know, things like these, especially like with videography and the style of, of the video that I do, is that uh, in order to capture viewers or capture attention or whatever you want to call it, um, you have to think as a viewer, as a friend, like you're talking across, like we're talking right now, like you're crossing, right. rather than make them feel like an outsider looking in. So that's always something that I keep in mind. Does, do I always achieve it? Probably not, but uh, it's always a learning process. I didn't go to film school or anything like that. I just uh, did the same thing where I did with uh, van builds. I kind of looked at creators that I liked and how, you know, and I picked things that I thought would fit me. what were me. some creators that you would pick that you would be like, oh, I really like this person's style of so uh, you probably you guys probably know who he is he's canadian uh it's not it's not chrome uh it's peter mckinnon he's a i was video. gonna st- yeah. i was gonna say that <laughs> dude that dude is insane yeah like, he's great i mean the stuff that he does i mean i i know when i found him i don't even know because i mean he was like the number one YouTube, like he got, I mean, I'm going to call it like rookie of the year award on YouTube. (laughs) Okay. You know, like, um, I mean the guy's stuff, like it was just insane. Just the way he would capture stuff and just show stuff. And I loved the storyline and yeah. So, well, that's the thing. Yeah. I learned a lot of things, uh, from his channel. Like, uh, the way I came up on his channel is exactly when I sold my bar. So before the bar, I, had a passion for photography i had like a canon camera and um then you know owning a bar you do nothing else except that and then when i sold it um i picked up the camera again i started looking at like uh how to shoot better and all that stuff and uh i think he says this as well but basically before i came across his channel there's a bunch of boring guys snobby talking about like the camera features and stuff like that and then I came across his channel and I was like, man, he is wacky, but he knows what he's talking about. You know, right. he like, and just got me to watch him more and more. So, yeah. Is there anybody else that you can, that you're like, oh, this was another person that yeah. I really. Uh, Bound for Nowhere. I'm not sure if okay. you're familiar with I the channel. I don't know if I know him. Okay. Uh, it's a couple actually. And they, okay. uh, they travel in a truck camper. Okay. And they their cinematography is insane. Well, to my eyes. I mean, they go yeah. to Canada. No, they've been to they've been to Alaska, they've been to Baja. And they uh their style is a little bit different. They just uh film a whole series, then they work on it and they upload. So they don't they're not very regular on okay. YouTube. They're not very consistent, but it's really good. It's like watching a movie when you watch them. Yeah, it's like watching planet earth (laughs) okay yeah no and that's where there's so many talented people and one of the great things about youtube is getting to experience um and learn i mean i know that i personally have learned so much um from youtube and when i you know being into photography and videography as well and, and then when i got into drones you know really trying to understand them and which one i wanted and and knowing like it is. It's. It really is YouTube Academy. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I'm sure that that's why you know, even for us, even um, 
you know, starting this WTDU, which is just like, you know, more information. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do enjoy sharing the knowledge that um, I've gained over the years. And, mm-hmm. and it, it is fun getting to share it with uh, an audience that maybe otherwise would no idea. You know, if, if it wasn't for YouTube, I would not know who you are either. Yeah. You know, so totally. it's 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 awesome to be able to experience that and then as well as experience all the places that you go because that's what i continually say is like not everybody can maybe you can't afford to do it or maybe um it's just not in your schedule or maybe you have kids or whatever yeah. it may be youtube is kind of giving you an outlet to an inlet through other people's eyes and i think that that's you know, again, like what you do and how you're capturing that, you know, I think it's, it makes it fun. And you're like, oh, and I think as well, then you're like, oh, that's not far from my house. Like I could go and do that. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I mean, we're, we're so in a society full of excuses of is like, I can't, Yeah. instead of being like, let's just go, let's, let's just do it. Like, what do we got to lose? Like, so what, we waste a tank of gas? Yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, if you don't waste it on gas, you'll waste it on something else. So, you know, it's not. Uh, but, you know, I, I always try to check myself. And the way I order is like, I get to do this. Because what you right. said, some people are not in the position to do it. So I, I really, uh, yeah, I love taking people in those places if I can. And um, you'll be surprised how many comments I get where like, oh, like, your build is awesome and we're taking notes. I'm in an SUV now, but I'm trying to get a van and, you know, like stuff like that. So, um, yeah. And the filming uh, aspect of it is that's a, uh, that's a tough one. Like the audience doesn't see all of it, but the process is kind of long. Yeah. Like if you were to set up a camera and film you filming, you making oh, the man. video, like a behind <laughs> the scenes, like, There's, and then that's only, that's only the first part of it. Yeah. You know, it's like the editing and all the other stuff that goes on to it. You know, I mean, I'm super thankful that I have, you know, people to help me out with that, um, you know, aspect of it because, you know, day to day I'm still having to run a business, um, and do, you know, everything else involved in there. But it is, is truly like, it's fun. It's a passion project. I enjoy doing it. And that was even the whole point of like, it was funny, like in January of 2020, um, we bought this podcast gear and we're like, we're going to do podcasts. Like, this is going to be fun. We're going to talk to people and get to meet people. And then then it was like, (laughs) COVID. Nope. (laughs) It was like, nope. We got (laughs) shut down immediately. Oh yeah. And it was like, it was discouraging because it was like, there was just, there was nothing you could do about it. You know, it was, nobody wanted to come and hang out with me, you know, four feet across the table and sit here and talk. And I just wasn't, I didn't adapt to the zoom thing because I like being in person. Like, I just want to like, what's up? Like we're hanging out at a bar, hanging out at a park. We're hanging out, just rapping and, and keeping it real and having fun that's what I think, you yeah. know. So I'm like, okay, we're going to start doing this again. I want to do this. I want to have fun. Um, and I think this channel, Jeremy's World, allows me to, you know, meet people outside of just what we would normally do in Weld Tech Designs. Cool. But, like, get to meet really cool people, you know, like yourself that otherwise. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, the, only, the only opportunity was the, that I would get to know you if not just watching your channel would be if you came into our shop to have hey, something done, I don't know. you know, I'm, so I'm down to meet you guys in person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're, we're just in San Diego, you know, oh, not there you, far, go. <laughs> you know, so no. It, and so it's, it's definitely, it's fun and entertaining. And I mean, it's uh it's so neat to hear, you know, I say this a lot, I guess, but I'm like, I love hearing your story and you know, where yeah, you're, you. you know, where you're coming from. So now tell me, ideally we kind of touched base on it you know a little bit as far as like where you would ideally like to go but to you 
What does the next five years even look like? And let's maybe even take a step back and be like, what is your goal for 2024? Um, to do this full time, actually. And I'm okay. hoping it, uh, it'll probably happen by the end of the year. It started. What to, are you at far as sub wise go? I think How I'm uh, sub- close to 1500. Okay. Um, but it's starting to, uh, I'm not sure. I've, I've done a piece with different media and that's picked up a bit. And, uh, you know, I just uh, say yes to invites if I can and do podcasts and stuff like that. Uh, you're my no, second podcast. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm right there with you as far as like, you know, trying to grow my own channel right. and, you know, have fun with it and enjoy it. So what would be like your ultimate, what's your five year goal then? If we were to go more, we're going to you know jump out a little bit further. Where would you like to see yourself be in five years? Do you still see yourself like in this particular van? No, I probably, I know you started like, you know, like the $200,000 vans are not for everybody, but you can't ignore Storyteller Overland. <laughs> I know you oh, guys no, know I mean, well, so <laughs> uh, yeah. I, uh, I don't know that I would be in this van, but I'm not sure if I would sell this van because okay. I'm, I'm getting so many memories with it it's part of my life you know it's allowing me to do so many things that otherwise i wouldn't be able to do because i would be paying rent um so we'll see uh, on one hand i want to buy a high top and build it myself but then on the other hand i look at some technical stuff that right now is a bit above my be- my head maybe i'll research and get to know that like stuff when it better. comes to like solar and all of that no i know that i uh more plumbing. like plumbing <laughs> okay plumbing is not my friend i hate plumbing gotcha. <laughs> uh, yeah. and so do you like the class b's like if you're ideally you would like to stay in a class yeah, b versus absolutely. going into something bigger like a class c no no not at all i that's okay. a, a big no for me okay uh it's just uh well because it's my only vehicle it's you know around town it would be a pain to drive around and do your daily things finding parking um and you can i know if you install better suspension and stuff maybe you can get a class c up to like places that you wouldn't be able to get it otherwise oh i'll take you crazy places (laughs) in a class c motorhome but I mean, I like the size of this, you know, of I don't, the bees, yeah, yeah I, it's fine. You know, uh, I have a bed, I have a kitchen, I have everything I need. I wouldn't see the point of a bigger one. Um, right. Yeah. Unless like, you know, I start a family and maybe then I'll start looking for land or something like that. Gotcha. Now, how old are you? Uh, 25. Oh, dang. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I was going to say, no. I was like, really? Uh, I think 40 something. I stopped counting at 40. Well, let's okay. just say that. So now, <laughs> is that in the cards? Is that something that you see um, that you would like to do? Are you, is that? Um, as in, like, starting a family, I'm not sure because um, the biggest reason I like this lifestyle is because I like the freedom. I like to do whatever I want, whenever I want, go Okay. places and no, i mean it makes sense yeah uh now i know that i'll probably meet somebody at one of those like van meets or something or i've you know that's another thing that i need to get on faster like just go to like some uh overland meets or whatever overland yeah. expo and stuff like that i'm sure you guys yeah, go there all the up. time yeah yep. yep it's coming up here shortly oh is it really oh I, I yeah i think up. it's in uh i want to say it's in may okay so oh, that's what i'm like maybe it'll I'll be see here there. before we know it <laughs> So, yeah, it's it's like one of those things that just creeps up on you. And then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know, that's next weekend. Oh. But, um, <laughs> no, I think that that's I'm I mean, I applaud it. I'm like, I know that I personally um, could not live in a van, especially with my family. Yeah, but of course. Just, you know, uh, even I don't even know, like uh, I think I enjoy like camping trips and mm-hmm. doing things of that nature. But I don't know that I could do it full full time so i think you know that is i think the only two other options i would consider if i skipped uh doing this lifestyle is maybe a truck camper like with one of those pop-up uh i forget the name four wheel campers i think is their name yeah no i know what you're talking about like yeah truck bed one yeah or uh maybe a towable but again a truck you know but a small like nothing too crazy only because i would leave it somewhere then i could drive the truck around and not... yeah but with your luck you'd find you'd come back to home and it would be gone maybe you know you'd be like oh. yeah 
You gotta be careful where you park that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. You know, so definitely is one of that those is, things. That is, yeah, it's nothing's perfect, really. You know, you have to pick yeah, and choose. Yeah, no, you what, never yeah. know. So. But as long as you're still having fun doing it, and I think that that's, you know, the goal of this whole thing is like enjoy it, have fun with it. Um, and that is great. I definitely um, want to say thank you, you know, for coming on and, yeah. and hanging Thanks out with me. us. You know, here, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I look forward to, uh, you know, seeing more of your videos where you go. And uh, now that we know what your one year, five year goal is, we're, you know, we're going to be bugging you, being like, hey, Stefan, make sure you on track, on track uh, for your goal. And, you know, okay. maybe if you're ever down here, you know, we can uh, wrap in person and, you know, come back, talk some more. But, Absolutely. Uh, you know, thank you so much uh, for coming and hanging out with me. If, People want to find um, you more. I will put links below, okay. but why don't you go ahead and tell them because your Instagram and your YouTube are a little different. So yeah. So my Instagram. Where can people find yeah. you? Uh, my Instagram is uh, Bohemian Tales, as in stories. Uh, and then my YouTube is my name. My first name is Stefan, and it's spelled S T E F A N. And then last name is G H I. CA. So it's first and last name and um on yeah, it'll pop up on YouTube for sure. And, and, that's and we're where gonna I'm at. put all of these links yeah. in this video as well down below. So you won't even if you miss the spelling of it, you'll be able to just go down, go check him out. Um, you know, he's got some awesome stuff that uh, he is you. doing <laughs> and, and in a killer van. So uh, um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in the attic and Stefan. That's all that I have until next time, guys. I will see you later.